isn't and it? this is all about Bross when the screaming stops, which I think has just totally taken everybody by storm really got you new fans sure. who maybe weren't yes. around mm -hmm. right. um and reminded everybody about how great it was and everyone's sort of fallen in love with you again is that how it feels for you it does actually i have to be honest with you i didn't know if there was any i mean i'm i don't know if you agree with this i didn't think there was any one thing that would would create a better understanding or perspective of matt and i and the, the welcoming energy that we receive here now i literally look forward to coming home here or home <laughs> as matt says but it's uh i didn't know if that day would ever come so to finally be in the middle of a loving amazing energy in this country is is uh, not only a surprise but i'm it's a wonderful place to be it's also like we've we, any any entertainer you know you get represented by sound bites your whole life so you're going to an interview, soundbite, soundbite, soundbite. What the movie did also, not only did it connect us and humanise <coughs> our lives mm. and let people see that we're dysfunctional as a family at times, but we're also very, very functional and we can get things done under pressure. It also let people know that we actually do have a life and we've had a, we have bona fide careers in America and we, we do come back. And, and I think that it also allowed us to um, address certain personal things that we hadn't Two very very we had time people. for you know we had no time for it but it also we kind of swept a lot of it under the rug because it was just mm. some of it was just too painful and it was strange to see my brother's candor and then vice versa in of all places in front of a massive film crew for nine months or eight months but it worked and it felt like when you built up to the big gig at the end yeah, yeah. It was so great to see you perform. It had a victory and to it for us in that sense. You know, it felt like, wow, we did this. But at the same time, we only did it with the support of the fans. We wouldn't have been, there'd be nothing without them, really. Um, and they, they, they came and they rallied two nights in a row and uh, they gave that wonderful end, that, that up feeling of that movie at the end, which frankly it needed. I think as well, to Luke's point, I think the fans needed it too. I mean, yeah, they do. fans feel very validated that because they know us. And, like, and any band out there will have their core fans that, that understand that band's universe in a weird way. And I feel that they feel validated and they, and they really are very, very proud. They're extremely proud and, and they're loving it too. So. And it was that hug that we were all waiting for us. <laughs> it was just a moment of, yeah. We, get, we did it. You did it. Yeah, we got through and it. And somehow the two of you had done it as well. I think that hug, I, I don't know how, it, actually we've never discussed this, but for, certainly from my point of view, when I saw that in the movie, I was like, you know, there's my brother there, you know, and here we are and it's like, my goodness, we've really just been, we have a good work ethic and that has also been one of the reasons we haven't communicated because we've been busy carving out careers that we can live upon. But that in itself has stopped us having that moment of communication and like Matt rightly said, it was in front of a film crew and then the country mm -hmm. and it worked and it built bridges and, uh, and, and it's an ongoing process but it's a process that's now funded with so much communication and love which, uh, I'm, again, another beautiful ramification of the film. I was secretly hoping one of the special guests might be Stevie Wonder because he's in London, isn't he? Oh, wow. what an amazing idea. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think... And of course he is there in the famous quote that you yeah. actually were superstitious because yeah, of which, which Wonder. I stay, which I actually stay firm to that quote, I really did. I mean, it's, it's my life and it's... Matt was life. reading the liner notes of the album and they're actually quite beautiful words and obviously, and... Um, you know, art should be inspiring, and I think that's exactly what you meant by that, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. if Stevie Wonder knew that that fact, if you if you read the line, if you believe in things that you don't understand, then you will suffer. As a as a, a very humble beginnings, our family didn't have much. We were, we we really were crippled by that that superstition, and uh, everything. If you do that, this is going to happen. If you do that, this is going to happen. And I read it and that was our literature back then you the, the liner notes of an album where you're the literature of, of, of the young generation and um and i stay true to it i was I'm, and i'm so happy that a, an artist even today still inspires me i've seen him quite a few times live i still think he's one of the most prolific lyricists lyricists in the world and uh, he just inspires me deeply it'd be great for you to perform together wouldn't it i mean yeah. i hear talk of new music could well, there be, be new combinations we are going to be playing superstition in brixton so maybe if we're lucky enough <laughs> we could ask our guys to reach out and maybe one day we'll have an opportunity to record together and that's really said from a fanboy's perspective it's not but an can, expectation in any way but i can say that we are very very close to actually being able to say exactly but yeah. it's it's very very profound what we've managed to to work out and 
we will be without question starting a, a new album very very soon yeah yeah absolutely. but very seriously like something that is really powerful and we, it won't come out until it is but we've got an in, the most incredible team that we've assembled and yeah we, it hasn't even actually we haven't pressed the we haven't turned the key on that but it's days away and and, we, and will we it both, be a yeah. different kind of music yeah. oh my god absolutely like course, what? Yeah. Can you it's give just, us a sense? It's going to have both of our influences. Yeah, we both accepted that. I have definite tastes that are all kind of inspired by an amazing group of artists, as has Matt. And the melee of that, those two influences, will uh, will truly provide, I think, the most authentic Bross album ever. I think we, we're going to put our songs on their feet, sort of in a live process, and build that produced album around that, right? We want a great, a great producer <clears throat> that can, can actually also put us in our places at times when that's, a, that's the job of a great producer and, exactly and but if we come up with the songs and um, we're just looking forward to the process we have not learned each other's creative language yet but that's also going to be part of the journey and uh, it's all it's all it's all really exciting but it's uh, creativity comes from a very passionate place and you can't forget that if it's not passionate then it's probably not going to work out and the thing is playing live together the first introduction <laughs> to music for both of us again as as bros is all live at the moment which that will carry into the studio as soon as our, co our comprehension of where this goes it's because we're going to go tour that music so it's going to be uh like I say, I, I don't even know how related it will be to the beginnings, but like any origin, it doesn't necessarily stay there. It ends up, it's, it's home maybe 30 years later. It feels like we're in the era of the pop and rock biopic, doesn't it? Rocky mm. Man for Elton John, Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, for Freddie Mercury and Queen. Surely there's got to be one of Bross, hasn't there? Yeah, I mean, I, I personally, um, we've definitely been approached by that. I personally would rather do one sooner than later because I don't think it always should be at the end of your career because I think there can be two, you know, as, as many as many great artists have had, three, four. <coughs> so for me personally, I mean, I'd love to, we have been approached and it's, mm -hmm. it's something very exciting to me. So For me, sure, I just think if that album, once we get this next album, I've, it's not like the end of a career. I think that at least gives us, say, from from that point on, would you say, let's see what's going to happen? But then it kind of at least would close out on a new beginning. We have had, we have honestly... The, the, <coughs> been approached the, the by it, yeah. The documentary is that it just, the tip of the iceberg, I mean, as revealing as it was real time, our, our, our lives have been sensational in good and, and bad ways. And... I don't think people would believe the journey that we've been on mm -hmm. personally as well as professionally and um, it, it's, it's quite an extraordinary story and it would be nice to actually, if we've, if we've come this far and been this candid, we might as well do something that's really, really revealing and, and also interesting and hopefully inspiring. Who would you get to play the young news? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> news. Come on, that's like the best pub question the, ever, isn't it? News. Who would I get to maybe, play the young me? Maybe we'll do that on social media. Like, who does people? Who do people think that would play the be the best young news? <laughs> the young, the young me's. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I've never actually. It's, that would be an interesting kind it of be, consideration like, to think. go through. Really Let's put it. it out there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's right. put it out there. Right. Yeah. And if you had one piece of advice to the young stars now who are at the centre <clears throat> of a frenzy, it can't be the same frenzy that you were in because I think the world has changed, hasn't it? But mm. there's a different kind of frenzy. There's social media added in and all of that. What would your advice be now that you're here? Um, I would say simply stay tethered to your true creative love your true true creative voice and try to in a respectful way communicate to your managers and the people around you helping you to achieve that let them know that you're prepared to work every day as hard as they need you to but it must be tethered to your creative truth i'd also say and i would say that you know a successful single is an incredible achievement um but be very aware that's what it is it's a operative word a successful single so just keep writing don't chase the hit chase the art and chase the journey. Um, don't get obsessed with critics and don't just... You know. And accept yourself, look in that mirror and say, that person rocks, they're the best chance you have of achieving all your dreams. That person looking back at you in the mirror. It's not hokey, I mean it. It's, you, you, it's very easy to sort of break yourself down and question, am I this, am I good enough, am I handsome enough, tall enough, short enough, whatever. You're perfect as you are and go get it done.